So for those of you who don't know, Elizabeth Warren has essentially caught up to Bernie Sanders. When you look at aggregate polling data, it is now the case that they are in a statistical tie. This is a dead heat. So it may very well be the case that we soon need to get very vocal about the differences between Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. The only problem and reason why I think it doesn't really make strategic sense to do this now is because there's a bigger target still in the race. That is Joe Biden, and he still is pretty much the front runner by numerous accounts. Now, his lead has in fact shrunk. And, you know, when you look at the trajectory, I think it makes sense to predict that it will continue to go down. With that being said, though, it really doesn't make sense for Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren to start aiming at each other now, because if they start taking shots at one another and they start driving down support for one another, then they are effectively doing Joe Biden's bidding for him, which doesn't make any sense because he's still the biggest target. He still is the worst case scenario where if he wins, I think we're looking at another four years of Donald Trump. So it doesn't make any sense strategically for Bernie and Warren to start taking shots at one another so long as Biden is pulling ahead of everyone. But that doesn't mean that we don't at some point have to start really distinguishing between Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. But that just means that in order to get to that point, we really need to go harder on Joe Biden. And, you know, Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, it's evident that they both know that it makes no sense for them currently to go after one another. It's why at the debates, they've kind of tag teamed Joe Biden. But one issue that I've kind of taken with uh, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, to be fair, is that they both, even if they criticize Joe Biden, they've gone too soft on him. When this individual is not looking out for normal Americans, he is doing all of these high dollar fundraisers with fossil fuel executives. It's, it's, it's just absurd. Why are we even considering Joe Biden? So you have to get more aggressive and you have to take on Joe Biden and take him out as quickly as possible so we can get down to the real race, the real primary, which is between Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. I think Bernie Sanders knows this, and it's why as of late, he started to really hone his craft when it comes to criticizing Joe Biden. So Bloomberg tweeted out an article titled, Biden praises pharma to donors as he pushes to cut prices. And as Jennifer Epstein writes, Joe Biden praised pharmaceutical companies on Saturday, offering a line that drew pushback from Democratic opponents who have demonized the industry's focus on profits. By the way, great drug companies out there, except a couple of opioid outfits, the former vice president told donors at the Dallas home of David Jenica a craniofacial surgeon. Now, Bernie Sanders then tweeted in response to this article saying, I disagree with Joe Biden. The pharmaceutical companies are greedy, corrupt, and engaged in price fixing. At a time when their behavior is literally killing people, America needs a president who isn't going to appease and compliment drug companies. We need a president who will take on the pharmaceutical industry, whether they like it or not. That is exactly what we will do. And this is really what Bernie Sanders should be doing, because we keep seeing article after article about Joe Biden doing these private fundraisers in the ham getting extra cozy with the establishment and big dollar donors and it's just it's inconceivable that he thinks this is still acceptable in 2019 i mean what are you doing hillary clinton did this in 2016 she lost because everyone viewed her as the establishment candidate and rightfully so so at a time when people are disenfranchised and feel disenchanted with the establishment for you to not call this out it's it doesn't even make sense. Joe Biden is your opponent. So you are in a primary against him. Now is the time to go negative because it's not bad if you're going negative for the American people. And whenever there's another candidate that takes shots at Joe Biden and very harshly criticizes him and points out the differences between them and him, they get a boost. So it only makes sense for Bernie Sanders to aggressively go after Joe Biden as a means of showing why he's the true candidate who is best suited to take on Donald Trump. And understand, Bernie Sanders has the most to gain by taking down Joe Biden because numerous polls have shown that a lot of Joe Biden supporters view Bernie as their second choice. And I know that that doesn't 
really make a lot of sense. But I think Bernie is benefiting from name recognition. So let's use that to our advantage. Let's take down Joe Biden. And Bernie's got to be aggressive. And what he's doing here by ripping Joe Biden for this, this is precisely the strategy that he needs. Now, I want to share another criticism that Bernie Sanders had of Joe Biden because we all saw the debate where Joe Biden was lying about Medicare for all. And Bernie Sanders was asked after the debate in an, in an interview with Anderson Cooper to um, further, you know, elaborate on his response to one of Joe Biden's criticisms of Medicare for all, specifically with regard to the cost. And Bernie Sanders just pretty bluntly said, Joe Biden doesn't know what he's talking about. Take a look. There was a moment where Vice President Biden uh, contradicted you or went after you on, on that plan. I just want to play that for our viewers and then talk about it. The fact of the matter is, we're in a situation where, if you notice, he hadn't answered the question. This is about candor, honesty, big ideas. Well, let's have a big idea. The, the tax of 2% that the senator's talking about, that raises about $3 billion. Guess what? That leaves you about $28 billion short. The senator said before, it's going to cost you in your pay. There will be a deductible in your paycheck. You're going to, the middle class person, someone making 60 grand with three kids, they're going to end up paying $5,000 more. They're going to end up paying 4% more on their income tax. That's a reality. Now, it's not a bad idea if you like it. I don't like it. I think he meant trillion when he was saying billion, but uh, your, what, what's, your, what's your response to that? I think Joe doesn't know what he's talking about. I mean, I just got to, I like Joe. Joe is a friend of mine. I just don't think he knows what he's talking about. He said, we're spending $30, billion, $30 trillion over 10 years on health care. Wow, yeah, it's a lot of money. It is. If we maintain the status quo, according to a study done by the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Studies, we'll spend $50 trillion. Hey, Joe, we're now spending twice as much per person on health care as the people of any other nation. We're paying by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. The current system is incredibly expensive. Every study that I have seen shows that Medicare for all, which eliminates the $100 billion in profits made by the health care industry, which ends the incredible bureaucracy and administrative nightmares inherent in a system which has hundreds of different insurance programs that have to be, you know, have to be dealt with by administrators. We can save many, many hundreds of billions of dollars, provide health care to every man, woman, and child, and save the average person significant sums of money on their health care costs. That was strong. That was a very, very strong response. Bernie, you know, it's long overdue for him to start coming out and saying, Joe Biden doesn't know what he's talking about. Call him out for the corporate shill that he is. But I will say this, Bernie, you don't have to qualify every Joe Biden criticism with some, you know, caveat about, well, you know, he is my friend and he's a nice guy. I know him personally. Drop that. Joe Biden is nobody's friend but corporate America's. He's not our friend. He's not looking out for us. And we are banking on him losing so Trump loses. Because if he wins the nomination, I think there's a 50-50 chance that Trump wins. And I don't want to roll the dice. And you can look at public opinion polls. And I think correctly points out that Joe Biden is still polling better than Donald Trump in head-to-head -head matchups. But still, so was Hillary Clinton at this point. And I don't want to risk it. So we need to take down Joe Biden. Even some corporate media pundits are realizing this man is a joke and he can't win. So Bernie doesn't need to qualify his criticisms of Joe Biden with, you know, I'm his friend and, you know, we know each other. I've known the, the Biden family for a long time. Drop all of that. This is a primary. You can be a little bit more ruthless and it doesn't matter. They're still going to accuse you of always yelling and being overly aggressive. Just communicate to voters that you're looking out for them and Joe Biden isn't. So it really is important for Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren to take down Joe Biden because neither of them can win this primary if Biden is still such a gigantic threat. Now, at the Iowa caucus, in spite of polls, Joe Biden could still lose because, you know, these grassroots candidates, more progressive figures, tend to overperform at these caucuses. This is what happened in 2008. Um, and this is something that could very well happen in 2020. It's just a matter of if we really want to get down to what this primary race will most likely be about between Bernie and Warren, we've got to take out Joe Biden first. So if Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren 
start really relentlessly going after Joe Biden, this will benefit both of them because the quicker we get to them criticizing each other, once Biden is kind of out of the equation, the quicker we can really see who the eventual nominee will be. And I hope it's going to be Bernie Sanders. But currently, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren have got to go after Joe Biden. And I think that calling out Joe Biden's willingness to shill is a really important first step in that direction. Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous, and he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly.